Hey, I'm gonna show you how to make a doll dress. I'm calling this the hanky dress because um, I use old vintage hankies. They're easy to come by, they're super cute and charming. They have sweet little patterns on them. Um, we're going to be doing a double skirt, sort of like a attached slip and full lining bodice. It will be about 15 minutes the video. Um, it can take you obviously longer to make the dress. You will need at least three hankies or just fabric scraps or old garment fabric, thread, needle, scissors, a locking hemostat, which you can find at Harbor Freight or get on Amazon, um, pinking shears if you have them, um, an orange stick, which is just this, um, that helps kind of get your hands out of the way of the sewing machine, but um, you can absolutely do this by hand if you don't have a sewing machine it'll just take a little longer and a fabric pen if you have one um by all means don't run out and buy this stuff if you don't already have it um i hope you have fun take your time and thank you so much okay let's figure out which hankies are gonna look good together and what we want to use Fold and iron your outer skirt hanky in half using the skirt pattern piece to ensure it is long enough. If the hanky already has a finished or decorative edge, you might want to use that so you won't have to hem. Keep combining fabrics until you find a formula that you like. Cut your outer skirt fabric in half along the fold line. Put wrong sides together. Cut your inner skirt fabric in half too. Also put wrong sides together. The bodice is where you can make good use of a damaged hanky. Here I'm cutting on the bias and cutting out the large flower pattern. I'm using this same hanky for my outer bodice and my lining, but it's fine if you want to use a different hanky for your lining, something maybe not as pretty, or something maybe that would be a really nice secret complement to what you've got going on on the outside. Um, there's flexibility and leeway with these smaller pieces. Use the skirt pattern piece to trace the armhole and just double check one last time that the skirt is long enough. Right sides together, place the bodice front and the bodice back pieces so at the shoulder seams. Trim the back opening open if you haven't already. And we're going to do this again with the bodice lining. Iron flat. Place your bodice front and your bodice lining right sides together. Align at the arm shoulder seam and pin and pin the back opening together. We're going to sew along the back opening edge, around the neck edge, and then back along the other back opening edge and both arm shoulder seams. If you have pinking shears, trim the curved edges. It makes turning them a lot easier and the curve smoother. 
we're going to turn right sides out using your locking hemostats, going in through the front opening edge, grasping onto some of the fabric from the back opening edge, gently, gently pulling through. Um, use the hemostat tips to gently sort of push into shape that right angle of the back opening. Press bodice flat. Ta-da! With wrong sides together, right sides out. It's counterintuitive, but this is the way you do it. So the side seam. I left the decorative edge because we're just going to cut that away. Do both sides. We're going to trim so, so close to this seam. Very close. Then you're going to turn wrong sides out. You're going to press that flat. And now we're going to enclose that first seam by sewing on the wrong side, right sides in. It's a very tight little seam. Take your time. Use your little needle or your orange stick or whatever to get in close and to feel where that seam is. And then just do the second side same way. Now we're going to do the same exact thing with the other skirt fabric. This is the outer now. Remember, right sides out, wrong sides in. Now that the outer skirt and inner skirt fabric is sewn, take a moment to take a look at that armhole opening, tidy it up, retrace it, trim it out. Now we're going to do the very small back opening and I messed up with my first filming, so I filmed again using different fabrics. So this is the inside lining and the one with the pictures on it of food. That's the outside skirt. Um, we're going to have to trim like a very small, like maybe two inch slit in the back. I don't draw it on. I usually fold it in half, marking the armholes, and then hit it with an iron. So you can kind of see that here. Ugh. I just cut along the fold mark. It's easier than trying to draw a line with a marker and about two inches. It doesn't need to be long. And then I do the exact same length on the inner skirt um, so that they match up. Okay, I've made this dress 500 times, and this is the part that still confuses me. You're going to want to put the lining, the inside skirt, right side out on top of the outside skirt, right side out. Um, if you need to visually kind of assemble it the way it's going to ultimately look at the end and then flip it like I just did, then do that. Um, but trust me, right side out, right side out on top. Then pin the slits together. And then go through and pin the armhole openings together. Right at those sewn seam lines. Then you're going to sew the back opening together 
up one side and then go and do up the other side. Okay, now we're back with the other fabric. That's the inside lining, the inside skirt that's on top, right side up. On top of the outer skirt, right side up. And then we're going to sew around the armholes. Take your time getting close to that edge. So with the armholes sewn and the back opening sewn, you're going to turn everything inside out or right side out the way it's supposed to be. So then the outer fabric is on the outer and then the inner fabric is on the inner. Both, you know, the outsides <laughs> facing out. Um, you don't have to sew this additional decorative edge to enclose this um, seam, but you might want to for strength and just finish. You don't have to hand sew it. You can machine sew it, but I like a little hand sewing. You can do the same finished hand sewing on the back opening edge. Now we have to put a gather stitch along the top edge of the skirt. Um, if your two skirt pieces are the same width, your outer and your inner skirt is the same width, you can do them both at the same time. If one hanky is wider than the other, which sometimes happens with vintage hankies, then you have to do them each individually. Um, do a running stitch up at the very edge and then a second one. Don't neglect this step. It's very important to get an even gather. You need two rows. You have to do this at the front of the skirt and the two sections of the back of the skirt. You can machine sew this at the widest stitch length, but hand sewing is nice sometimes. Now we're going to gather the stitches. Secure knot on one side, pull on the other side, um, and then we're going to pin to the front bodice um, edge, the front one, not the lining, just the one front one. Match up the ends, that one armhole end to the other armhole end. Um, you can pin that in place and then at that point you're going to disperse the gathers evenly across the edge. Um, take your time. This is a little tiny and it's a little fussy, but if you work really slowly, you'll get it. I'm sorry, I'm not really in camera frame here. This was really hard to do <laughs> and make sure I could see what I was doing, but also get into frame. All right, here we can see now I've got the gathers evenly dispersed. They're pinned only to the front bodice section. You leave the lining loose. And then we're going to slowly sew with our machine this edge together. I, this is this is tough, I'm not gonna lie. It's a tiny, tiny little piece of work, but just work slow. Use your orange stick or your long needle or whatever you have. Don't sew over your fingertips because I've, I've done that a couple times. Um, take the pins out as you go, but if it's too tiny, just, you know, say your prayers and sew right over them. All right, woof, take a minute to just admire your work because it looks good. 
Now we've got to sew the back bodice lining into place. This we're going to use an invisible ladder stitch or blind ladder stitch. Um, it's kind of complicated for me at least to describe, so I tried to get in real close with the camera so that you could see what I'm talking about. Um, of course, I went off frame because <laughs> it's so hard to do this tiny work but also be in frame. Um, you take tiny little stitches, you go in through the bodice, and then you take your next stitch along the gather sew line, and you will not be able to see this on the outside. Um, and then when you pull it tight, you won't even be able to see the thread. So theoretically, you could use any color thread here and you'd never see it. So because this is so important, I wanted to film again to try to get a better angle. So I used the other dress that I was working on. This one has that um, zigzag trim along the armhole, which made it kind of bulky but and awkward. But you can work around it if you're just patient and don't give up. And um, this is just to show you again how to get started with this invisible ladder stitch. It's frustrating and tiny and look at my terrible nails. But you just have to keep plugging away. Don't give up. You get those first couple stitches in and then you'll be good to go. Um, and then you're going to have to not only do this on the front section, but you're going to have to do this on the now two back sections of the back of this dress. Okay, woo, it's done. And for whatever reason, I didn't do a final shot of the original floral dress, so here we are with the secondary dress. Just to show you all of the details and the kind of really finished look of all of this, there are no raw edges. Everything has been almost like hemmed twice. There's the original edge of the hanky, there's my added zigzag trim, um, rick rack. Um, and it's a solid little dress. You're going to have to put finishing buttons on the back, though. That's another time.